Hi guys, rather a long time ago I had a request from somebody who wanted me to make one of those cheap eBay kits um, a USB power supply, mains powered USB power supply. So I ordered one and did the um, grandad's post bag bit, put it away and forgot about it. So. I've just found it again. haven't started it, all I've done is taken it out of the plastic bag and put it in this plastic tray. These are the instructions that came with it. So all the part numbers are numbered and you can work out what they are even if you can't read the Chinese. So I should put them together. Now I'm trying this setup. The camera is facing me, so it's upside down to me. But we should be all right. I was looking at the components. The only one that gave me any cause for concern is this double LED. It's green and red. So we've got green and red, probably can't see that, but that's red. That's green. And looking at the circuit board, it's got, I don't know if we can see that, G and F. F for Freddy. So I don't know which way round it should go. At the moment, I've put it in so that. The green one goes to the G. Obviously there's nothing in there that I can understand that tells me which way round it should go. So I'm going to do that. The other thing is the top of that LED is supposed to just poke into that hole on the top there. So I don't know how far in I should be putting it because that's obviously got to bend up. There's slots inside the case here that that circuit board will slide into. So I'm guessing I need to leave it sticking out quite a way so we can bend it up to fit. I don't know. Whatever we do, it's going to have to bend at right angles. Like that. But until we come to put it in, I don't quite know how far it needs to go. I think I'll probably do it just like that, and that'll do. Well, I guess I might as well solder that one in, as that's the first one I've looked at. using my USB soldering iron so we'll find out if that's got enough power and it looks like the sun's going to come out we're down in the conservatory at the moment so we might get a bit of background noise I'm afraid because that means we're going to get some interesting shadows as well. Well, that'll do for a start.
Right, we want three 1K resistors. I reckon that's these three here. I could just measure them to be on the safe side. Yep, that's 1K. When I do these kits, I usually work on a simple process of elimination. There's only three, or well, there's only one resistor here that I've got three of. So it's got to be that one anyway. So that's R2, R4 and R5 according to the instructions and I just flicked one on the floor. That's R5. That's R4. I've got a fine one I flipped on the floor. R2. If you remember, the USB soldering iron turns itself off if you haven't used it for a few seconds. I'm sorry about the shadows, I haven't counted on the sun coming out. It's been raining. Right. What I really ought to be doing is ticking the pieces off if I've done them. Six three hundred and thirty. I seem to remember orange is three. orange brown. R6, that one.
R1, 2.2 meg. That's a quarter watt. 2.2. Two point two meg. My meter doesn't even go up up that high. I reckon it's this one. Red, red, black, yellow. But I might leave that. I think it's that one. But because my meter doesn't go up to two meg. Well it does two meg but not two point two. Okay, next one, R3, 1.12, oh, uh, I'm not sure about that, my meter's not that accurate, I might have to get my, this down, one, two, that's got to be right, brown, red, Brown is 1, red is 2, black is 0. Yeah, it's going to be that one. So that's R3. So that's got to be two point two, which is R one. Just remember, I don't claim to be an expert in any of this. If you want to watch people who know what they're doing, I would recommend BigClive.com or Julian Eilert. Julian does these little kits and he tells you what each bit does. its purpose on the circuit board is. My only interest in doing these is just to see if I can physically do it. R7 is, it says 3, and I know that orange is 3, so this must be R7 because it's the only resistor left in the pack. Oh gosh. I'm looking at this, R7 it shows just here on the circuit board, on the diagram it shows R7 as being much larger. It's got to go in there. <laughs> That's not good. It's going to have to go in at an angle. That is the right one. Oh, 
also the USB thing, that's going to go in there. And that will just about fit. I was just making sure it's going to clear that resistor. Well, that's a bit of a surprise. Soldering on. This is my second one of these soldering irons, and it does seem to take longer to heat up. I'll also put that USB thing in while I'm doing it. That's going to struggle to heat. Soldering iron is going to struggle to heat that up. This is going in shadow, isn't it? This is hopeless. There was no sun when I started, honest. Two microfarads, four hundred volts. Get it the right way round. Ah, C3. Right, that's more like it. Get that the right way round. Seven two fifty volt. D1 4148 Cool, that's that one, 4148. That's a bit difficult to read. That's actually D2. way round, black line or black end, can we see that? I 
I don't know if the camera is picking it up. Black end is where the line is on the end of the triangle. Seven, four double oh seven. Silver end is the end that tells us which end goes where the line is. So it's going to take a bit more heat, it's a thicker bit of wire. Right, I hate that. Had to go back to mains powered soldering iron to do that. So, um, disappointing. I really wanted to do it all with the USB soldering iron. And while I've got the mains powered soldering iron out, I might do these as well because they're going to be quite thick but you'll see why I don't like using the mains powered soldering iron because it's not the one for this sort of job look at it it's much too big that up in a minute. Certainly made swift work of it. But it's the wrong soldering iron. My original soldering iron died. So I had to swap it out for this one in an emergency. I had to go and buy you one full price in B and Q. Right, hopefully the remaining bits I can go back to the little USB solder and iron. Right, Q1 S9014. That one. S9014 Q1. I'm just going to have to buy a decent solder and iron, it's no good. My old Antec solder and iron was my favourite. That died last year, I think it was. MJE13001. It's got to be this one because it's the only other one we've got.
this one's got a little dot on one corner. So we know which way round to put it. That's totally unhelpful. <laughs> I just... There's some problems with this board. I mean, you would think that white dot just there would indicate pin number one, but it can't. Because that latch there would indicate pin one would be on the right. On the diagram, they've got a square peg there to indicate pin one. I think it should be that way up. we got left? One diode and the power leads. Just wondering how the power goes on. Are we supposed to solder it to the end of those? No way my USB solder and iron will manage that. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to solder them onto there. It's all going in shadow again, isn't it? Right, no question in my mind we're going to have to change to the mains powered soldering iron to try and do this bit. be in the shadow and you're not going to see what I'm doing. This is hopeless. Well, on the face of it, that's all the soldering done. I don't like that at all. Soldering irons heated up those metal um, pegs and also melting the plastic around them. This has got to go, there's a slidey bit down the side here, slidey bit channels, looks like it's supposed to sit in. And somehow we've got to get that LED to line up with that hole, oh, that seems to have gone in there, yeah, got it there. Push that as far home as I can. Obviously I need one of my screwdrivers. Well, on the face of it, that's it. Because the main problem now is I need an adapter to go from these to the UK type of socket. So I'll go and get one of them. 
Okay, I've got an adapter and I've brought my USB fan down because I really don't trust this for one minute. I won't be plugging a mobile phone into it or anything like that. Okay, we've got a red light on. don't know what that means. Plug that in. Switch it on. Oh, green light and fans working. So that looks like success. Like I said, I just don't trust this. But it appears to work. Switch the fan off again. Red light comes on. I don't know if you can see that is red. Looks green, looks yellow. But it is red, honest. And switch that and then that is that is green. Switch that off. That's red. So it works. Success if you trust it. That was hard work, or I made very hard work of that. Using that USB soldering on, it just didn't seem to have the power for a lot of it. And as you can see, my mains powered soldering iron, which I had to go and buy in a rush the other day, because my original one had died, isn't the right sort. It's got a, what I'd call a spade end spade bit on it instead of a pointy bit so we got there in the end but it was a struggle for such a simple little circuit oh and there was a couple of things that circuit board didn't quite match the um, diagram there R3 the spacing for the legs on R3 was wrong on the circuit board. They were much closer together than it shows on the picture there. And that little FL817C had got a, a white dot on that leg there which I would call 1, 2, 3, 4, pin number 4. On the circuit board. But I've gone by this, I've put pin 1 on the right there. Because that's where that little indentation would indicate it goes. 